Batman and Superman have fought together on many occasions. In fact, I've actually made a list of the five best times they fought. Uh, links in the video's description. But the question is, how does an ordinary man defeat a god? Now, I will admit that calling Batman an ordinary man is a bit of a stretch. After all, he is in peak physical shape, knows every martial arts on the planet, he has a genius level intellect and access to a virtually bottomless account that lets him make the most insane of weapons and bat suits. But still, he has no powers. So how does he defeat Superman? Well, a lot of the time they fight with Batman in a strength enhancing suit, but it's usually not the suit that actually beats Superman. That just keeps him in the game a bit longer. It's usually some secret weapon that Batman has that actually brings down the Man of Steel. And this video is going to look at every way that Batman has defeated Superman. Doomsday Virus In Dark Knight's Metal, we see some dark, alternate versions of the DC Universe. And in one of them, Superman goes murder crazy and wipes out most of the Earth's population. But when he gets to Batman, he decides to taunt him and make fun of him. And make fun of the fact that everyone always thought that Batman would be the one to have a backup plan to take Superman out and how ridiculous it is that a mere human could defeat him. Of course, as it turns out, Batman does have a last resort, a mutagenic virus that transforms him into a doomsday, complete with kryptonite breath. And Batman uses it, transforms himself, and kills the Man of Steel with his new immense strength. He spits in his face. Now, Batman has developed several kryptonite weapons over the years, in fact, a lot more than several, including kryptonite bullets. But my personal favourite kryptonite use was in Batman Endgame, when Batman fought the entire Justice League, who had been mind controlled by a special Joker toxin formula. And Batman used his Justice Buster suit to fight them all. And when he got to Superman, he told him that the knuckles on his suit actually have red stars in them that have been shrunk down by the atom and put in the knuckles so that Superman will really feel those punches. But ultimately, of course, the suit is not enough and Superman just rips it to pieces. And so Batman spits some kryptonite gum that he's been chewing at Superman, which takes Superman out. Although I should say, officially it's not chewing gum, but a kryptonite lace polymer. But basically it's kryptonite chewing gum. The Kryptonite Arrow In The Dark Knight Returns, Batman fights Superman in an armoured bat suit, and it's possibly the most famous fight the two have ever had. And though his bat suit makes Batman insanely strong, it's still no match for Superman's powers. But Batman knows this, so he has used his insane wealth to develop a kryptonite weapon, which is an arrow that Green Arrow fires at Superman. And it doesn't kill him, but it weakens Superman enough that Batman could, if he wanted, kill him. But of course, Batman doesn't want to kill Superman. Instead, he just fakes his own death and everyone thinks Batman's dead, but he's actually alive and training an underground army of mutants. Because this is comic books, and that's just how it goes. Gold Kryptonite and Kryptonian Nanotech in the Injustice universe, Batman has defeated Superman several times. The first we'll go over is in the first game, Injustice Gods Among Us, where Batman calls in allies from another universe and uses another Superman to defeat Superman, which worked pretty well, and they were able to lock up the evil Superman in a red sun lamp prison cell that suppressed his powers. And just in case the lamps ever failed, as they of course later did, and Superman tried to escape, they had a backup plan in place, which was the atom shrinking down and going inside Superman's brain of a small shard of kryptonite that he can use to stab Superman's brain unless he goes back in the cell. And this works pretty well to stop the Man of Steel. It's kind of ironic to think that the smallest, weakest hero, the atom, can defeat the most powerful hero, Superman. And I should also mention that in the prequel comic, Batman uses magic to stop Superman at one point. They put him in a magical sleep that puts him in a fantasy land where everything he's ever wanted comes true. Basically, it's the same universe, except his child and Lois Lane didn't die, and he is still a hero, and he gets to watch his child grow up. It's basically a utopia for him, which makes it all the worse when Wonder Woman has the God of War break the spell and bring Superman back to reality, where his wife and child are unfortunately dead, and the world is terrified of him. And later on, Batman actually convinces the Olympian gods and an army of Amazons to take down Superman for him. And this ends with Zeus commanding Wonder Woman to fight Superman in a one-on-one -on -one duel. And Wonder Woman does not hold back. She basically just beats the crap out of Superman and even manages to break his arm. 
And even though this was technically Wonder Woman and the Olympian gods who defeated Superman, Batman did arrange it, and using his allies is a way that he often defeats Superman. But in the second Injustice video game, Batman actually fights Superman head on. First he reveals that he has a gold kryptonite knife that cuts Superman's skin like a regular knife would cut you or me. And then he goes and gets his special bat suit that is laced with kryptonite and specifically designed to take down the Man of Steel. And he does just that, beating him up using the new suit and of course the Kryptonian nanotech in his body that enhances both his strength and his durability by several thousand percent. And afterwards he uses gold kryptonite to permanently remove Superman's powers and sends him to the Phantom Zone. Although I think we all know that Superman will return in the later Injustice games, and it's quite likely that he'll have somehow got his powers back as well. Weed Killer In the cartoon, The Batman, Lex Luthor uses kryptonite combined with Poison Ivy's mind control spores to turn Superman into his slave, and he sets Superman on the task of killing Batman. Now Batman puts up a good fight and even tries to use some kryptonite, but ultimately he is being overpowered. That is, until he takes Superman to a weed killer factory and sprays him with a lethal dose of weed killer. Or at least lethal to humans, not to Superman of course. And the weed killer destroys all of Poison Ivy's mind control spores and brings Superman back to normal. And of course the two then team up to take down Lex Luthor. He blocks out the sun. In Superman Batman 78, the issue opens with Batman and Superman fighting and Batman stabs Superman through the chest with a kryptonite sword, which is just an awesome picture. Of course, it's then revealed that this story isn't real, it's just two kids debating which one of these heroes would win in a fight. And they start a new debate, and Batman and Superman are fighting in space. And Batman has built thousands of robotic bats, possibly tens or even hundreds of thousands, that combine together to form a giant bat shield, which blocks out the sun and cuts Superman off from his power source. Now the two of them do continue to fight, but Superman is losing his powers and losing his abilities to fly, and so they both plummet to the ground and they both die. Now technically this isn't a win, but it is a way that Batman has used to beat Superman by cutting him off from his power source. He threw Lois Lane off a roof. In the film Batman Hush, Batman is fighting Superman, who is being mind controlled by Poison Ivy. Now Batman uses kryptonite knuckle dusters to give himself an edge, but unfortunately, it doesn't really knock the sense back into Superman like Batman had hoped. So his ally, Catwoman, throws Lois Lane off of a roof in order to scare Superman so badly that he snaps out of Poison Ivy's mind control. And it works, and Superman saves Lois, and they team up and take down Poison Ivy. And Superman is royally pissed off at Batman for nearly killing the woman that he loves. Although it is then revealed that Batman had actually told Catwoman to just dangle Lois off the edge, not to throw her off. It was actually Catwoman's idea to nearly kill Lois Lane. But it still kind of counts as a Batman win. And in the Batman Hush comic, it's not actually a kryptonite knuckle dusters Batman uses, but a kryptonite ring. And Batman has actually used a kryptonite ring in order to defeat and actually kill Superman in the Execution 2001 comic. And killing Superman may seem a bit extreme, and to be honest it kind of is, but he does it because Superman loses his mind after intergang Nuke Metropolis and he goes a bit dictatorial and tries to sort of take over the world in order to keep it safe. It's basically the plot for the Injustice video games. He drains Superman's powers. In the Superman Batman story, Nanopolis, Superman gets shrunk down to microscopic size, and Batman shrinks himself as well to go and get him back. Now while they're there, some nanobots fill Superman with so much power that he loses his mind and is just attacking everyone and everything in sight. But Batman manages to hold Superman off long enough to figure out a way to drain his powers so his power level goes back to normal. And he uses a swarm of Paranites that drain and consume Superman's energy. And this returns both his powers and his mind to normal. And they stop fighting and of course team up to save the day. A Suicide Vest A comic set before Superman and Batman knew each other sees Superman come to Gotham City and try to catch Batman. But Batman is prepared for him and has set up a field of energy around his body. So if Superman touches Batman, then a signal will be sent to a suicide vest and it will explode, killing an innocent man who is somewhere in Gotham City. So Superman can't touch Batman. It's not quite a way of beating Superman in a fight, but it is a way of outsmarting him, as Superman doesn't want to kill an innocent man. 
Of course, it's later revealed that the innocent man is actually Batman, because Batman would never endanger another person like that. But he did have to plant a bond on someone, because Superman could use his powers to see if he was lying. It was just his way around it. And Batman also has a similar device in the Superman Batman comic series. It's a shield that creates a field of kryptonite around his body. So if Superman comes too near Batman, he gets poisoned by kryptonite. And this is actually a pretty good idea because it negates Superman attacking Batman at super speed because the kryptonite would stop him. Unfortunately, Batman has to deactivate it as it is killing Superman, as this is a weaker alternate version of Superman from another place in time and space. It's a bit of a long story. He makes his skin translucent. In the comic book Babel, Ra's al Ghul gets a hold of Batman's secret plans for defeating all of the Justice League members. And his plan for Superman is a special form of red kryptonite that makes Superman's skin translucent so that his body absorbs solar energy even faster than before, so much so that it overloads Superman's bodies and all of his senses. And it basically puts Superman in agony and he can't do anything but scream on the floor. Now, technically, Batman didn't use this on Superman, of course. It was Ra's al Ghul. But it's still his plan, so I thought it should be mentioned. And when this comic was adapted into a film, the Justice League Doom film, the plan was actually changed to just shooting Superman with a kryptonite bullet, which is nowhere near as imaginative, although it was quite effective. But in that universe, that was Batman's plan for defeating Superman. And Batman did actually fire a kryptonite bullet at Superman once in order to snap him out of some mind control. It happens in the Trust comic book storyline. Kryptonite Gauntlets and the Justice League In the Dark Knight Strikes Again, Superman goes to Bruce Wayne's new Batcave to have a confrontation about what Bruce has been doing. Namely, he's been saving old members of the Justice League who've been imprisoned for years. And Batman doesn't bother to talk to Superman, he just attacks him with a robotic dinosaur, a version of Bizarro Superman, the Flash's super speed and some bombs, a kryptonite napalm arrow from Green Arrow, and the atom then shrinks down and goes inside Superman's inner ear and jumps around on it, messing up Superman's equilibrium and his whole head. Until finally Batman comes in with a pair of super-powered kryptonite gauntlets and just punches the hell out of Superman. All the while, Superman is just saying that he only wants to talk, but Batman says, I'm done talking, get out of my cave. And that's that. Red Solar Lamps in the Red Sun film, and the comic book as well, Superman's rocket lands in Russia instead of America, and he is raised in Russia, and eventually becomes the leader of the Soviet Union, and a bit of a dictator as well. And the Russian version of Batman plans to take him out. So he first detonates a lot of bombs all over Moscow, and kills a lot of innocent people. We're talking hundreds, if not thousands. And this forces Superman to come find him, and Batman is underground and ready for him. He has a load of red solar lamps set up to mimic red sun radiation that take away Superman's powers. And since Superman has never had to actually fight a real fight before, because he's always had his powers to rely on, Batman just beats the hell out of him and locks him up. Of course, Wonder Woman then intervenes and turns the lamp off so that Superman can come back. And then Batman decides that instead of being taken prisoner, he'll just detonate a bomb that he has in his stomach, preferring to commit suicide rather than be captured. And even by Batman standards, this one is pretty nuts. But red solar radiation is a great way to negate Superman's powers, and it's used a lot across the DC Universe. A Poisoned Fawn In the story, How to Kill a Superman, Superman is suffering from a Jekyll and Hyde personality switch, going from being normal to being a massive jerk. And he is causing a lot of trouble when he's a massive jerk because he has godlike power. So naturally, Batman decides the only thing to do is to kill him. So he follows Superman into the bottled city of Kandor, where Superman has no powers, and he tricks Superman into shaking his hand, poisoning him with a hidden fawn on his gauntlet. But Superman doesn't actually die, or at least he doesn't stay dead for that long, as he grows to full size and gets all his powers back and goes back to normal. And it's revealed that an evil alien cat was responsible for Superman's changing personality, as he had built a Jekyll Hyde mind-altering ray, yeah, it's one of the weirdest Superman fights, to be honest. But basically, Batman just went to a place where Superman has no powers and can therefore be injured by normal means. Kryptonite grenades and a kryptonite spear. In the live-action film Batman vs Superman, 
Batman uses a lot of kryptonite laced weapons to weaken and beat the Man of Steel. Namely kryptonite grenades which blow up a kryptonite gas in Superman's face and weaken him, giving Batman a chance to actually do some damage, and of course the kryptonite spear which can actually pierce and cut his invulnerable flesh and kill him. Now personally I'd say that Batman won, even though it was really the whole save Martha thing that ended the fight. And considering that's how the fight ended and how much they have been made fun of because of that save Martha ending, well, I'd say that no one really won this fight. A Solar Booster In a Lego Batman movie, Brainiac has taken control of Superman using his alien technology. Now, Batman does fight him in a mecha suit to begin with, but ultimately he defeats him in a different way. Batman uses a solar booster to supercharge Superman's powers, making his body so powerful that his immune system can destroy and overcome the Brainiac mind control devices that are implanted in his body. And this returns Superman to normal and ends the fight. And it's actually kind of funny since the Lego films always hinted, or rather strongly suggested, that Batman would one day use kryptonite to defeat Superman, but he found another way. And that is every way that Batman has defeated Superman. Now, as I've said, they have fought a lot over the past few decades across dozens of different comics and universes. My point being that if I have missed a unique way that Batman has defeated Superman, then I apologize. But please let us know about it in the comments so that we can make this list as precise as possible. Along with which one of these is your favorite way to defeat Superman? Personally, I love the Doomsday Virus because a Batman with the powers of Doomsday is just awesome. Plus, outpowering Superman really is the best way to beat Superman. After all, Doomsday has actually killed Superman before, so we know it works. But if you prefer a different way, or even better yet, have your own unique way that you've come up with for Batman to defeat Superman, then please let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, Share, like, and comment.